have no background in performing at all. I was never even in the school play. So it remains a mystery to me as to how I got in this business, except that I like to say that my Chautauqua career started in a way as a college student with a gunshot in the classroom. And I know that sounds very ominous, but um, my um, college instructor came in one day wearing a coat and tails and a top hat with a gun in his hand. And he managed to shoot a blank in the classroom, which startled us all, uh, mesmerized and entranced us all. And then he proceeded to talk about John Wilkes Booth. So I will never forget the impact of seeing John Wilkes Booth walk into the classroom. So I was hooked. Later on, I went to a library program at my local library and a small town library hosted Willa Cather. It wasn't, of course, Willa Cather, but it was someone portraying Willa Cather. And I was so enthralled by the idea that someone could portray Willa Cather convincingly. But even more, I was, I was just enchanted by the fact that someone could answer questions as Willa Cather. Whatever question could be thrown at this woman, her name was Betty Jean Steinshower, and she still does this work. I, I couldn't believe that she could answer those questions without missing a beat. So I kept thinking, wow, wouldn't it be interesting to do this kind of thing myself? And in a crazy moment, one wintry day, I got some papers from the National Endowment for the Arts and they were looking for someone to create a project in education and they were going to offer some funding. So I just recklessly filled out the form and said, I would like to be Emily Dickinson and I would like to bring that uh, portrayal to the classroom. And by golly, they funded it. So then I'm really stuck, right? I, I can't back out now. And from there, I, I began doing their search and the travel and so on and so on. And Emily Dickinson was the first character that I created. What impact has it had on my life? Well, just personally speaking, I have learned so much, not just information wise, but presentation wise. You know, I made every mistake that you can possibly make before I managed to do a good performance. So it has expanded my ability to learn. It has expanded my range of knowledge and it has expanded my confidence in being able to stand in front of an audience and tell a story that people are interested in. Now, I can't say enough about how that works in my life and how it would work in a young person's life too. I learned about mining and exploring primary source material. You know, students really don't get an opportunity to do that very often. It gave me confidence because I don't like to stand in front of people. And I know that sounds crazy. I'm more Emily Dickinson at heart than I am um, P.T. Barnum. So I could, I could be in front of an audience because I wasn't really being myself. So that was the way it worked for me. I love learning, and this is a way to learn and use what I learn, make an impact on people's lives, and get applause at the end, and sometimes get a paycheck. It just doesn't get any better than that. I think what I love about Chautauquans is we come from so many different places. Uh, my early experience is so much different than Deborah's, and yet we ended up in almost the same exact place. So for me, I came out of the womb knowing that I wanted to tell stories. It's, I don't know if it's in the Italian-American Sicilian blood. I suspect that it is. Um, but I was acting at eight years old. 
I wrote my first poem probably at 11 years old, my first novel, which was terrible. At 15 years old, I went to school and I double majored in theater and English literature. I mean, I just knew um, that I wanted to do this work. And I've been very blessed for 30 years to be a professional, to be a teaching artist, which I love. Um, that's in the blood of Chautauquans too. We don't just perform, but we teach. It's, it's in our nature. So for the first 20 years, I, I wrote stories in, in all, imag you almost name it, I've done it. Musicals and screenplays and stage plays, novels, poems, short stories. Um, if it's the mode of telling story, I want to learn how to do it well. Audio drama, I'm very into now. I knew instinctively that in order to really understand our craft, you have to understand all the parts and pieces. So I was a writer and I was an actor, but I needed to become a director so that I could understand the language of directors as a writer and as an actor. Then 10 years ago, and Deborah, you may know her, uh, Eileen Evans, who has Voices of the Earth, I was living in West Virginia around Morgantown, Fairmont, and I had done a Kennedy Center uh, teaching artist workshop with Eileen. That's how I had met her. And she called me and she said, Joey, I do this thing called Chautauqua. And I said, I have no idea what that is, Eileen, but it sounds intriguing. So my first character was Captain Louis Emilio from the 54th Massachusetts. Uh, people may know him from the story Glory with Matthew Broderick. Um, they were part of the U.S. color troops. And that journey was just, I had, I had loved the Civil War forever. But the idea of these men who wanted to fight for their country, having to duck riots in the cities where the drafts were, having to get on trains in the middle of the night, how white officers didn't want to serve with them. They, they resigned their commissions, many of them, and they walked away. And Luis Emilio was a man who believed deeply in this project. So from there, as Deborah said, I was hooked. Once you do Chautauqua, you're hooked. And it speaks to me as a teaching artist for the same reason uh, Deborah was talking about Willa Cather, um, the ability to know so much about this person that people could ask you any question. So after a year and a half or two years or three years of studying these people, you're like, yes, bring the questions, bring the questions and let's see what we can do with them. One of my characters is a Titanic survivor, a woman from Ohio who survived the Titanic. Edith Russell is her name. And um, someone in the audience asked if there were dogs on the Titanic. Well, I happen to know how many dogs there were on the Titanic and what kind of dogs there were and what happened to the dogs. And I remember there was a bit of audience buzz because they were surprised that I would know something so obscure. <laughs> it was a good moment. The best thing that we can do is, is tell the story through the person and as the scholar with as much truth as we can. When you do that, the audience takes the journey with you and some very interesting things come out of it. When I come out of character and the students are just dumbfounded because they thought I was really the character. And I remember once being in a school for troubled kids. And after I finished and came out of character, one big young man stood up and was just stomping and sort of waving his fist saying, I thought you were the real person. I thought you were the real person. Now I know that the whole tent thing is complicated. It's expensive. It may be going away because of those two reasons. It's also hot. Uh, <laughs> people are um, not always happy to be sitting under a tent on a 90 degree day. But to me, that is just the best experience of all. Summer night, um, a crowd, families. You know, that's one of the things that, that is distinctive about Chautauqua because whole families come together to learn. It's not just adults or it's not just kids in a classroom, but it's the whole family and their friends and you know, kids are playing frisbee and then the show starts and 
and there's ice cream sometimes and everyone's having a good time. I do remember in Warren, Ohio, when I was with Ohio Chautauqua and um, it was again, my Titanic survivor character. And that is a story that people just don't get tired of. It's as one scholar said, an unsinkable subject. It was a perfect night and I walked out on stage and there are 700 plus people spread out on this lawn. And I thought, this is what it feels like to be a rock star. Just as far as I could see, there were people. The bar was very high. It was an exhilarating night. And, and of course, I'm not saying that the only thrill comes from seeing a big crowd because I've had a handful of people too who we're just leaning into every word and we're gracious enough to come up afterwards and talk about how what I had talked about in character was meaningful to them. There's a lot of benefits, small crowds, big crowds, but I really do love those outdoor venues. I like the summer nights and the big tent. That's perfect.